Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Montville United Methodist Church. We are so blessed to have you with us and all of you on Zoom as well, worshiping with us, whether in person or through pixels. We are so grateful to be together, even in our separation and social distance. But, beloved, on this Christmas Eve, it is our delight to prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels and to go in heart and mind to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass in the babe lying in the manger. Therefore, tonight, let us hear from Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God spoken through the prophets of old and also the gospel writers. And let us make this house of prayer glad with our worship, different though that expression may be. And friends, it's in a year like 2020, looking ahead to 2021, perhaps, that we need the promise of Christ, our Emmanuel, God with us more than ever before, coming down into our midst, coming down into our messes, and helping us to have hope, peace, joy, and love to last, not just for the season, but a lifetime. And so, friends, won't you join me as we join in worship, open in worship, with the call to worship. The Savior of the world has come. On this night, the church throughout the world joins their cry. Glory to God in the highest. Alleluia. At this time, we invite Joe and Lori Zellman to light our Advent candles. We light the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love. Tonight, angels far and near sing tender lullabies, well-worn fabrics full of years, hold in the warmth of parental love. Animals and shepherds crowd in tight, glowing with adoration, while a muffled cry squeezes out to greet the world. And would you join me in your bulletin? Tonight we rejoice, rejoice because, because the brightest the light, light, the light of, of the world, world has been born to, to overcome our darkness. On this Christmas Eve, we now light the Christ candle for the child of King, the infant Redeemer, the lowly Lord. And now we know. He is, he is born, born and, and nothing will ever be the same. Friends, if you're in the sanctuary, we'll have our words for the songs we'll be singing on the screen. And for those of you on Zoom, the share feature will be being used, and so you should be able to see the words so you can sing along with us from home even. But we invite you to come, we'll come and see this glorious sight that has been born on this night. But let us sing together, O come all ye faithful.
comes to us from the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verses 1 through 4a, and verses 6 through 9. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord, he shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the king, and the calf and the lion and the fatten together, and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the axe, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea.
chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. <laughs>
Our fifth lesson comes to us from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, and verse 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was light, and the light was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory. The glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. You may have noticed we've been hearing all sorts of voices, but none of them here in the sanctuary. So we do want to thank all our virtual liturgists who pre-recorded a scripture reading so we can have a number of voices incorporated into our service today as we hear from Holy Scriptures this story that is so old and yet is so new each and every day we approach it. And so would you join me, please, in a moment of prayer as we prepare to receive uh, our word from our message today. Lord God, just as we pray all Advent, we say, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Would you have your way in us as we seek to allow your Son, allow Christ, Emmanuel, to be born with us in a new and powerful way. Open our eyes, open our ears, open our minds to receive whatever you have in store for us tonight. But it's in Christ's name we pray all these things. Amen. Sitting up high on a counter aglow, a ham with maple blaze all aflow. There in the night, bathed in kitchen light, a sight that did not seem quite right. Up toward the piggy, a curious nose rose, sniffing and wondering, who's going to know? With no one around and wanting a feast, up jumped the creature and took the roast beast. The beast had no chance, a lightweight he was, ten pounds consumed by a creature with fuzz. Eaten and licked with a smile and a slurp, the creature lay down without making a chirp. Into the kitchen the owner did come, baffled and wondering where the roast beast had gone, and looking down at the creature below, with eyes as innocent as any could know, he shuddered in awe and brought in the spouse, the dog in the house, not the cat, not the mouse, had taken the dinner, and with that truth unveiled, Threw down his apron, the dog had prevailed. Now, although many have experienced some version of this story with some type of food involving their own pet or a friend's pet they've heard about in their house or their house, maybe with some unwelcome animal perhaps at a camping site it could have been, but there's actually another story about another person who took the roast beast. But it wasn't someone who was as innocent looking as a dog might be. It was mean old Mr. Grinch, who had a bone to pick with anyone who exuded joy during this special holiday called Christmas. But it wasn't just the roast beast, it was all Christmas the Grinch took with him, or so he thought. In Dr. Seuss's classic children's book, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the Grinch, posing as a fake Santa Claus, goes down the chimney of each who in Whoville and takes anything and everything that represents Christmas in his eyes. The stockings on each fireplace, the presents under trees, the food from the fridges, and even the Christmas trees themselves. Up through the chimney, the stolen things went up to the roof with the bad green Grinch. But if we read all the way through the story, we find that the focus is not so much on one man's determination to ruin a joyous holiday, but even more so the story is about a people's decision to not let anything hinder their Christmas celebration. 
And what the Grinch was surprised to find out was that if you take away all the tinsels and bows, if you take away all the presents and the food, you haven't taken away Christmas. The Grinch thought he could steal Christmas. He thought he could take away their joy and cause them to cry. But the Grinch later concluded, perhaps Christmas isn't found in a store, but perhaps Christmas means just a little bit more. Many feel like 2020 has been the year of the Grinch. We were sleeping in our beds like little Miss Cindy Lou Who, excited for what waking up would bring. But we woke up surprised that the figurative roast feast was gone. The thing we worked so hard, or our family worked so hard for, the thing we were looking forward to tasting and enjoying, it was gone. And with it also was taken away every representation of what we once knew and understood as normal. And it almost seemed as if we'd have to start with a clean slate and remake everything we had worked so hard to create, with what felt like bare walls all around, with no decorations in sight, because someone had come and stolen it all through the night. But if the Who's and Whoville can find a song to sing, even in the midst of bare walls, ransacked fridges, and treeless houses, then certainly we can find a song to sing in the midst of masks and social distancing. Because even if you take the stopping stuff to the presents wrapped, the fridges filled to where there's none of those things left, there's something that you haven't taken that is still with us. And that's the spirit, the spirit of Christmas. But for us as Christians, it's a little bit more that Christmas entails. And it's a story that I don't think even the Who's of Whoville can tell. Because for us, as long as one thing is with us, someone can strip away everything that seems to represent Christmas, but the most important thing will not have been taken away from us. And for us, that thing, that person, is Jesus Christ, our Emmanuel, God with us. Even if someone takes everything away, if Christ is all we've had, if Christ is all we have, then Christ is all we need. And friends, if that is the case, then we do, like the Who's, have a reason to sing. In the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 5, we're told that the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. No matter how hard someone may try, they cannot steal our hope. They cannot steal our peace. They cannot steal our joy. They cannot steal our love. No matter how hard any circumstance may try, it cannot steal our Christmas because it cannot steal our Christ. Christ our Emmanuel, represented in the last candle of the Advent wreath we lit today, is with us. Perhaps we can even say making all the other lights around it possible to glow. And as we prepare to reflect on all this year has brought and look forward to all that the next year will bring, I do want to ask you, what figurative darkness has come upon your life this year? This year of 2020, this year of the Grinch. What rain clouds, as we hear rain pitter and patter on the windows around us, what rain clouds have stormed in and covered you to the point of feeling overwhelmed? Or what is represented for you in the 10-pound ham sitting on the kitchen counter that has been taken away? Or what is represented for you in the bare walls in every house in Whoville when the town wakes up realizing that Christmas may look a little bit different this year? What do you feel has been stolen from you in this year of the Grinch? And also, what do you think has been stolen in your very own life as a whole? What has been taken away from you? Whatever it is, however dark things get, however bad things seem, however challenging any circumstance that comes our way, as long as we have Christ, like the who's and whoville, we have light and a reason to see. Nothing can take away that spirit of Christmas. As long as we have Christ our Emmanuel, the darkness, as John speaks to, shall not overcome us. And looking beyond our own lives, beyond ourselves, 
you know, who in your circle of friends, your neighbors, co-workers, do you feel like is struggling now, perhaps because they've lost family or lost a job, perhaps they've even lost a house or just lost the normalcy in a bigger way than you have? If you know someone like that, how can you reach out to them and speak this message to the who's and who build and that Christ our Savior wants to teach us? Because friends, no matter who may steal your roast beast, whatever presents are taken away from you under the tree, there is a roast beast in heaven that is not a lightweight that we'll, we will all be carving into one day. There's a gift that can't be wrapped that will be given to those who choose to let Christ light their way. Toward the end of Dr. Seuss's book, of How the Grinch Stole Christmas, we read a line that tells us why the title of the book is actually a misnomer. The author writes about the Grinch. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming, it came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming, it came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. Though we may feel 2020 has stolen a lot from us, may we gather around in socially distant circles like the Who's and Whoville as they join in chorus, as they celebrate the thing that couldn't be taken away from them, the spirit of Christmas, which for us is best represented in the person of Christ. And so perhaps we add our own story to the Grinch that stole Christmas to the 2021 that's trying to steal Christmas, saying, COVID-19 won't stop Christmas from coming, it will come. Somehow or other, it will come just the same. It won't stop Christmas from coming, it will come. Somehow or other, it will come just the same. And why is that? Because the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Amen. Friends, I invite you to join us in verse 2 of the first Noel as we continue in worship of Christ our Lord. Bring me 
word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. like the wise men, we come to the Christ child bringing our gifts, all we can offer, trying to honor and bring glory in whatever way we can. For today, and because of the COVID that we find ourselves in, we will not be taking up a formal offering, but for those of you who are in person, we ask that if you feel led by the Spirit to give a blessing, a Christmas offering to our church for the ministries and mission know that there are some receptacles out as you're exiting. You're welcome to uh, put your offering in uh, later on uh, as we depart. Uh, for those who are worshiping with us through Zoom, online, or watching this even after Christmas, we invite you, if you would like to offer your gifts similar to the wise men, that you would either, number one, write a check that you can send to P.O. Box 66, Tawaka, New Jersey, 07082. Or if someone who prefers to give online, you can go to our website at montwilliamc.org and click the Give Online button or the Give tab on our website there. But we thank you for the ways that you offer yourself, not just through your gifts financially, but through your prayers, through your presence, through your service, and through your witness. And we're grateful for all that we have to offer and all that we surrender at Christ Jesus' feet. Let us continue worship as we hear now our next passage from Isaiah.
prayers, would you please join me now in a, a prayer for peace? And following after this prayer, I'm going to invite you to join me in the Lord's Prayer as we pray together. Lord God, mindful of the light that shines in the darkness, the light which Isaiah 9 speaks to, let us now turn in prayer to the light of the world who is able to make a path of light, a path of even bright snow in a dark and frightening landscape. God, we pray for the needs of the whole world, for all your people. We pray for peace upon the earth you came to save. We pray for love and unity within the one church you built and for goodwill among all people. God of life and love, during this Christmas season, we have waited. And we ask that you would shine upon us this day. Make a bright path on the dark and frightening paths that we traverse upon this life. And during this season, especially this season of 2020, as we look to a new year and all can bring, God, we particularly remember those who continue to feel like they are waiting and who still hesitate to step into the dark for fear of a lack of light or a lack of your presence. But you, O Lord, are there to make a way where there seems to be no way. And so we remember and pray for the poor, the cold, the hungry, the oppressed, the sick, and those who mourn, those who feel unloved, both the aged and the little children, those serving on the front lines, near and far, for all those who do not know that you love them, we pray that you would reveal yourself to them in the season of waiting. Show them your love, show them your faithfulness, show them your light. And while we wait and pray, let us also remember those who rejoice with us. And let us remember that upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the Word made flesh, and with whom, in this Christ our Savior, we are one forevermore. These prayers and praises we humbly offer up before your throne. And now, in the words of Christ himself, that he taught his disciples, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please join us as we now sing a carol. A hymn that speaks this desire for peace. May this be your prayer as well.
chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven.
Friends, on a dark and stormy night when rain is pouring all around, you are the light of the world. May you go and shine your light for all to see. And when the darkness seems to overpower and overwhelm, overwhelm this little light of yours, I pray that you would keep it shining. And also remember that when you step out into the darkness, there Christ will be making a way for you, no matter where the journey has been. And so go forth in confidence, friends, as bearers of this light, as you witness and serve the one who is the light of the world. Amen.